Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at a term that you will study at the end of your microeconomics class, and that is the short run costs or the cost of production of a firm. This includes things such as fixed costs, variable costs, total costs, and of course, marginal costs. In this video, we'll teach you how to derive each of these and what the equations are, and then solve using different pieces of information. With that said, let's get into it. So a firm typically has two different types of costs. They have fixed costs and they have variable costs. Now we would denote total fixed costs as TFC and total variable costs as TVC. The biggest difference between these two is how they change depending on how output changes. So fixed costs do not vary when quantity or output changes. So you could produce one unit of output or 50 units of output or 100 units of output and the fixed costs will always remain, well, fixed at a specific value. Variable costs, on the other hand, do change. They go up or down as you produce more or less of your good. Let's take a look at some examples of each. So for fixed costs, this would include things such as rent or leasing of a warehouse, utilities and insurance. These things need to be paid no matter what your output is, even if it's zero. Variable costs include things such as the cost of labor, materials, shipping, etc., which will fluctuate depending on how much output that you're producing. So if there's only two types of costs, fixed costs and variable costs, well then the total costs, which are denoted as TC, is simply the sum of the two. So it's the total variable costs plus the total fixed costs. But what if you want to know how much producing one more unit of output is going to cost? Well, in that case, you're gonna use something called marginal cost. And marginal cost, which is denoted as MC, is simply the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. Let's practice these concepts on something you might see on a homework assignment or maybe on a midterm or a quiz. So in this table, I've given you the quantity or the output and it goes from zero through five. So zero, one, two, three, four, or five units of output. I've also given you all of the associated variable costs. So zero dollars, twenty dollars, thirty-five, all the way up to one hundred and twenty dollars. I've told you the fixed cost at zero units of output and you should be able to use the information that you now have to fill in the rest of this table. So I'll give you some time right now. I would advise that you pause the video, try to fill in this table, and then we'll take it up. Awesome, so I'm hoping that you gave that a try. If you didn't, well, we're gonna take it up anyway. So the definition of a fixed cost is that the cost won't change as quantity or as output changes, which means that if the fixed cost is $100 for zero units of output, well, it's gonna be the exact same for one unit and two units and three and four and five units because the fixed cost never changes. In this case, it's fixed at 100, but the total cost will change and it changes because it includes the variable cost in its calculation. So recall that the total cost is simply the variable cost plus the fixed cost. So for zero units of output, that would be zero dollars plus 100, which is simply $100. For one unit, it would be 20 plus 100, which is 120. For two units, the variable cost is 35, the fixed cost is 100, which totals to 135, and so on and so forth, 140, 165, and 220. I'm simply adding the variable cost plus the fixed cost at any given quantity or output level. What about marginal costs? Remember, marginal cost is simply equal to the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. Well, for this unique example, you'll notice that the change in quantity is one. We're always going up by one unit. So in this case, the denominator is one and we don't really need to include it, but watch out because sometimes the quantity won't be going up by a scale of one, in which case you need to make sure you take the difference in quantity as well. In this case, going from zero units to one unit of good increases my total cost by $20. I can find that by taking the difference between 120 and 100. To go from one unit to two units of output, I go from 120 to 135, which is an increase of $15. To go from 135 to 140, an increase of $5. 140 to 165, $15. And finally, 165 to $220 is an increase of $55. Those are my marginal costs. That tells me how much more expensive it will be to produce one more unit of output. Now we're gonna look at something that you should know very well in economics and those are the averages or the per unit amounts of variable fixed and total costs starting with the average fixed cost which is denoted as afc and it's simply the total fixed cost divided by the quantity 
Similarly, the average variable cost, denoted AVC, is just the total variable cost divided by the quantity. And then finally, as you would expect, the average total cost, ATC, is simply the total cost divided by the quantity. However, you can also just add the average fixed cost plus the average variable cost to get the average total cost. So you can use either method to calculate that particular cost. Now let's take a look at a slightly tougher example where we're asked to calculate the averages for each of these costs. In this particular case, we're being asked to calculate the following. The average total cost of four units, the average fixed cost of one unit, the average variable cost of three units, the average variable cost, average fixed cost, and average total cost of five units. And so you can see that those are the yellow boxes in the top right table, and we're being asked to calculate each of these. This is something that you should become very familiar and comfortable with because you will most certainly get this on your final exam and on plenty of homework questions as it is something that you should really understand as an economic student. So I will let you pause the video here, try to solve these values, and then we will take it up when you resume. All right, once again, I hope you paused and you gave these a shot on your own. If not, well, we're taking it up regardless. Let's start with number one, the average total cost of four units. Well, let's take a look at what the total cost at a quantity of four is. It's 165. So I have 165 divided by four units because my average total cost is total cost divided by quantity. That's 165 divided by four, which is $41.25. What about the average fixed cost of one unit? Well, at one unit, the fixed cost is $100. $100 divided by one unit is simply equal to $100. Number three is the average variable cost of three units. So at three units, my variable cost is $40. $40 divided by three is $13.33. The average variable cost of five units can be found by looking at the variable cost at a quantity of five, which is 120 and dividing it by the total output or the quantity, which is five. So 120 divided by five is 24. Similarly, the average fixed cost can be found by going to the fixed cost column, finding out what it is for five units, which of course it's still 100, dividing it by quantity of five, you will have $100 divided by five, which is 20. Finally, you have the average total cost, and there's two ways you can calculate this. You can add up the average variable cost and the average fixed cost, which will give you a total of 44, but you could also take the total cost at a quantity of five, which is 220, divide it by five, and you will also get $44. So average total cost can actually be done either way. We plan on making a video in the future that looks at the AFC, AVC, and ATC on a graph because we know that when you're first learning microeconomics, that can be pretty confusing. So keep a lookout for that video if it's something that you're interested in. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, comment in the comment section what types of economic videos and homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.